I, I, I want to encourage people to think of themselves as claims professionals or even like insurance professionals because you're you're not just doing like residential property hail storm hurricanes right you to to really i think to really to get the most juice out of the squeeze for this particular career you do have to diversify right to protect yourself from when the you know the company that you've like really gotten locked in with gets bought goes out of business decides to kick everybody off to, you know whatever happens then you've got you can backfill and you've you know, you could pivot and with the auto thing, I think that there's there's a lot of benefit to doing auto. If if a person wants to, to do like storms all summer long and that's all they want to do for property, they don't want to do dailies or whatever. Um, if they also do auto, it's a lot easier to turn on and off auto, right? Versus like property where a lot of the auto stuff's in an app, right? And you're just like, you're you want to work today, then you hit I'm available or whatever, and you, you just they, you get assignments. Um, so it's a little bit easier to. It's a little bit more, not always, not all of it, but like I think it's a it's it's a lot easier to to get going with it, even though it may not pay as much. You can do a higher volume, like a high volume, pretty quickly, right? Depending on where you're at, and so that that helps people over the winter, you know, over in the off season to protect the money, the big chunk of money that they made on the hurricane or the, all the big hailstorms that they did in the summertime. So you're not just bleeding money, right? Because, you know, and it sounds like you've got in the back of your mind, there's an end, there's gotta be an end game to this. You know, this is, it's fun, it's rewarding. It's, you know, in a lot of different ways, you know, financially, as well as through, you know, helping people out when you can. And even when you can't give them a check and you're still, you can still find ways to help the, the homeowner, the property owner. Um, but you, it's, it, it will, beat you down right i mean you can do it for a long time i did it for 20 years so i i don't know if it just means i got a hard head and i can handle the beat down but there's there there should be i think a person for the to make this to really kind of get the most out of this is to think beyond what they're going to be doing beyond the adjusting career like what are you going to be doing after that is it if you always wanted to start your own business doing start your own landscaping business or do you want to get your, yeah. your pilot's license while you're you know doing you know doing claims, you get your pilot's license, and then you start your own, like, like regional charter, whatever it is, right? I mean, it's something else. But you, but when you make all that money, you make $43,000 in a month or $90,000 in a month or, or half a million dollars in a year doing flood claims or whatever it is, save that so that you can you can buy your way out of this later into something that's, you know... I, I think that adjusters um, were a little bit entrepreneurial, right? To begin with, um, and have, being an independent adjuster is you kind of have your own business, right? In, in a way, because you have you're responsible yeah. for all your your gear, you know, your phone plan, your health insurance, your vehicle, your all your everything, right? You're responsible for that stuff. Your marketing, right? How, and your sales, like getting on rosters and doing a good job and all that kind of stuff, right? So I think it's a pretty natural transition from that. This is what I did. I mean, basically, into doing having your own business, and it doesn't have to be training adjusters. It can be sky's the limit, whatever you want. Um, so, I, I, I mean, maybe it was just because I got started when I was in my late twenties that I made you know make a hundred thousand dollars, you know, in twenty twenty or two thousand and two, right? That the, um, brand new truck, you know, guns, guitars, trips fancy dinners for everybody you know all that stuff just blowing it because i just didn't have a plan right and and i'm so grateful for you because you you i mean i'm telling you i just randomly found you back in you know 2018 you know what's the, what's adjuster tv or you know all this and and um for the people that's listening is like you, you guys don't understand like who you know like you really need to you know matt needs to be at the top of your your list of of just those people that you can call to you know send an email um you know he, he's always been you've always been responsive to me and and we've yeah. met several times you know i was in montana yeah. last october we ate lunch i mean um you know i'm I'm super i've always said you know you're you're kind of you're, you're my first mentor and um i greatly appreciate you but you're exactly right i mean my end game is you know i believe there's needs to be more 
two stories deep training out there um, because sure. I think there's some information that's floating around that's wrong um, that can get people in a lot of, of – um, um, accidents or deaths and so my okay. wheelhouse is is that whole climbing game i was a certified climbing instructor for 18 years and so i i believe down the road you know i could potentially team up with you know reality rope access you know kevin kramer or something like that and yep. and because there's just not i don't think there's enough um companies or 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 people out there that actually are training adjusters right uh, for two story steep access it is not you know it is not for the faint of heart and and i no. i take that i take that very um serious when it comes to climbing uh, i've climbed yeah. my whole life and knock on wood you know i've never had an accident and you know people just they're not they're they're not aware of you know the safety equipment like yes you may have this type of equipment but what about all the stuff that you're you're doing wrong you know and and you may have even been trained a certain way and but it's there's some things that's wrong with that and so i think long term yeah. like that's you know when i get to a point where maybe i can't climb you know i'm 46 and i still feel like i'm 30 but you know where right. i can't climb climb like i do now but um yeah i think my whole thing was i always kept the financial aspect of it's very last like I, I didn't want to worry about the finance, like how much money I'm making. I, I, yeah. I wanted. I came into insurance saying I want to work for myself. I want to have the flexibility to go on those trips or go snowboard the winter or whatever the case may be. Um, I want to help people. That's that's first and foremost. I've always been an empath, more or less empathetic person. So. I've looked at all the other stuff first. The financial gain is is always been last to me, is because if you work hard, you take care of people, you take care of yourself and your health, like you're saying, um, then the money will be there, and yeah. that's how I've always viewed it. You know, I, I try to stay humble with it. You know, all the social media stuff is just it, it's toxic and just you know there's a lot of mm -hmm. misinformation out there. You know, and it's like no. And then you get all these people that are frustrated because they've been told this, 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 and that's not how it is. Like you really need to get into it and see if it actually even fits your lifestyle. It may not even yeah. fit your lifestyle. It may be totally far off. And, you know, I've seen people like that. I've seen people that's never climbed a ladder on a deployment, and they they trying to get their ladder off a truck, and they drop the ladder. And I'm like, you're about to climb a two story roof that's a 912 i'm like you're going to die and i'm like stop please stop like like yeah. let's let's think about this so um yeah it's you know then game is is still work for yourself have the flexibility then later on in life can you go do something else or it could be two years from now and you say you know what i want to go start another business i want to go start doing this and that because now i've went through this whole process of actually starting my own business you know i have my llc i have all my business accounts all that set up you know so now nice. you already know that portion of it so now it's like okay well I can do that. So now, what can I, you know, do? So life's an ever, ever uh, learning experience and trials yeah, and you know failures. Sure. So yeah, I just yeah. you know life's fun. You know, insurance is fun if if you make it fun. If you're a brand new adjuster working for a major IA firm, you will most likely already be covered under a blanket errors and emissions policy. You probably already pay something like five or ten dollars per claim for this coverage. And what is errors and emissions? Well, if you're accused of messing something up on a claim, your E&O insurance will step in and help you out. But what if you cause damage or injury on a field inspection? For example, your ladder falls down and smashes the insured's brand new Ford F-150 Lightning. Then a general liability policy will cover you in that instance. Again, you likely have a little bit of protection to your IA firm as a newbie adjuster. However, if you've got a year or two under your belt and you make most or all of your annual income from claims work, then you owe it to yourself to upgrade your E&O and general liability coverages to be customized to you. And depending on how many claims you run in a year, there's a very good chance these policies will be cheaper for you with your own coverages. Better and cheaper? Sign me up. There's only one company that provides E&O and general liability solely to the insurance industry, and that is CPLIC, AKA Kaplik. They even have drone and cyber coverages. Download the free guide all about the different kinds of insurance you as the adjuster should carry at cplic.net 
slash Adjust Your TV. And with more than 700 videos, there's plenty more to watch here on Adjust Your TV. Don't know where to start? Just go to my videos page here on YouTube and type in a search term right here to find an answer to almost any question you have about property claims handling. And we'll see you in the next one.